Hey team, Luigi Mondelli here, weekly talk number 43. In this episode, I will give you one more tip to help you with your mindset going towards any competition or force on force training or anytime you're gonna get your skills tested under pressure. We will have another part coming next week about nutrition or maybe this week but um, this one I believe that it really helps boost your confidence at least help you organize your training in a way that you can go to a big event knowing that you have done everything that you're supposed to have done uh, you have done your homework you put the time into your organization you followed what you wrote I do believe that it's important to print out this thing that I'm going to show you guys. Have it somewhere, have it everywhere, at your work, at home, by your fridge, uh, and then you follow that because those um, this kind of organization can become your habits, right? So we always talk about thoughts, words, deeds, and habits. And, um, and again, this doesn't come from me. The first time actually I heard was from Kyle DeFore, but this goes back to ancient times as far as like living your life, right? So I, I'll go over this very quick. So first thought is like, you wanna compete, you wanna do your best, uh, you wanna be a competitor, you wanna pursue this life of putting yourself under pressure, uncomfortable situations. So you write down, so thoughts becomes words. Now, you organize everything, that's all we're doing here, and then what do you have to do now? Well, pretty much you have to do the deed, so you have to work on these things and follow 100%, and then those things become, uh, those tasks or actions become become your ha habits, right? So I'm going to show you this. This is actually, um, this was, who helped me create this for myself was Chris Graney, one of our black belts, master in biomechanics. He works a lot with many um, top professional um, athletes at a high or the highest level. So this is me. This is my schedule. Uh, this is a little bit old, so you still still have the old logo here, but it can help you kind of build your own. And if you need to, I'll send you my Word document where I have this, and then you can just change. Notice that. The gray boxes are pretty much the time that are reserved for private classes, but I haven't been teaching privates. Um, I just like moving away from teaching privates. The reason is just um, I have a lot of injuries, not enough time, too many projects, a couple of businesses. So it's, it's hard for me to reserve time, but I do have one or two students is still taking classes with me. Um, but most of the time I don't do that. I'm, where it's saying personal training, I'm working from home in my home office here that you guys can see. The dark blue will be the harder uh, workout times or days, and the light will be the light blue going to be light cardio or moderate um, training in the gym, the weightlifting gym, and the same thing when it comes to jiu-jitsu. So, so like how my Monday usually goes. Um, 11.30 a.m. I would have a harder workout at the gym, so I would lift harder. Then, of course, I have the teaching uh, that I have to uh, do, so I teach from 5 to 6, and then 6 to 7, actually, I don't do this anymore because it's wrestling for MMA, and Pat has been uh, running that. But at night, I try to get a moderate training, so if I work out hard Monday, if I know when, Right when I'm following this 100%, I work out hard on Monday mornings, and then I train. Um, I have a more like a moderate train late in the evening, and this is just because if right now I'm 51 years old, if I train here at five harder, I'm probably not going to have much energy for later. Then on Tuesdays I'm teaching in the morning, and then at one I might do a light cardio. What a light cardio could be, it could be some hiking, it could be some biking, um, it could be, well, light cardio can be so many different things. But then, um, at 8, I would do a harder jiu-jitsu training. So, by the way, this 8 uh, on Monday, of course, you guys can, can read here, is a BJJ training. So, Tuesday would be a harder training 
this is um, on Mondays a skill building right of course some cardio I'm still getting my situations uh, working my situational drills and etc but on Tuesdays on comp class that's when we have the harder training more pressure etc on Wednesdays I will go to the gym and do some light um, weightlifting. So not light, say moderate weightlifting. So moderate weightlifting here, I'm teaching and training a five. So it's kind of like moderate here. And here I'm teaching and training at eight, also moderate training. On Thursday, that would be a little bit my rest day during the week. So I would have after teaching at 11, uh, now it's 11 a.m., it's not even 11.30 a.m., um, again, this is an old schedule, I would do some rehab calibration, meaning that I would go to the weight room and um, put more reps into each exercise and uh, lighter weight, I would try to slow down every movement, make sure that everything is calibrated, Especially because, think about here, I had a harder workout day on Monday, moderate training at night, jiu-jitsu training, and then I'll have a light cardio on Tuesday, a harder training at night. So I'm going a little bit like harder here, harder here. Now here's kind of moderate. Thursday, I need to calibrate everything, make sure that my body is healing, right? Friday, I would do again a harder workout at the gym, uh, at the weight lifting uh, gym, and then a moderate training um, here from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. or from 5 to 6. On Saturdays, then I would hit the open mat, uh, open mat, I would train way harder, uh, put a lot more effort, and then I would go for a moderate uh, cardio. So I actually, um, I've been using my Sundays as, as my active rest, not now in the summer, but um, when fall, spring, and winter, my moderate cardio would be hiking, uh, rooking, especially on Sundays. I try to, I have a good watch, very good Garmin watch. I can put a link uh, in the descriptions here. It's just like overall amazing. <laughs> Uh, watch is not like an Apple watch or just a Fitbit or activity watch is like way more comprehensive it's not just for that but um, because I go hiking you know, like multiple GPS's on the watch and all of that but anyway um, the mother training mother cardio um, I try to get some challenge going as well so I do some rocking I put some weight on my backpack. I have a video actually talking about hiking. I will put the card up here so you guys can see. And um, But I, I track my heart rate. So if I feel that I'm under a good training zone, I speed up a little bit or try to get more elevation and etc. But anyway, um, this is just like a glance. You guys can see how I organize my training. I believe that... Um, this can help a lot when you go towards a tournament. I can tell you that every time I followed some regimen that I wrote down for myself and I took this um, stance like I wrote the schedule as if somebody else had written that for me. So that's very important. Um, the reason is like when I look at the schedule, first of all, Chris Graney helped me back the day, but I would take as, and, and of course, like I, chose when to do what it's just like how we calibrate it between harder and light or harder and moderate moderate and moderate so that's what he helped me especially with the rehab and calibration uh, I use this as if somebody else had completely written that uh, for me every time I went to a tournament and I knew that I followed some regimen and some scheduling I can tell you that I felt so much better I felt um, so much more assertive confident we have to be true to ourselves right so every time i went to a tournament knowing and this happens happened in my um maybe like two tournaments ago sylvia wanted to go to i don't remember if it's the world's world's masters or pan ams i was hurt and i wasn't training as much i trained but I'm not following any of this but she said that she would only compete if i competed <laughs> so 
I'm like, I wanted her to compete because I knew that she could win and she won the World's Masters uh, that year. But I went to compete knowing that I didn't do my homework. I didn't lose. I lost in the second match, not because of that. Um, but it's pretty much like I guessed out. Strength was gone. Finding a very skilled dude. Um, nothing major happened. He couldn't pass my guard. I couldn't sweep him. That that was it. But I had no gas in the tank, no strength. And I knew that passing that guy, I would be completely exhausted. So you don't want to go to a tournament feeling like that. So anyway, that's one tip. Uh, also check, I'm going to put here in the links to um, our Car Combatives podcast. I think the first three or four episodes with Walt Lysak, my RMA coach, we talked a lot about getting ready for competition. He he built this whole thesis about, um, uh, it, it was almost like college, um, you know, final, uh, I don't know how you call it here in the United States, like a thesis or something like that. Um, so anyway, he, he put together a very comprehensive guide, guidance for competitors. So check it out and send your comments here. If you guys want me to cover, uh, more stuff about that next episode is going to be about nutrition and, uh, how I hired or had a help from a nutritionist that I really like. I love those girls perfecting athletes. They helped me so much. But there are many other nutritionists I can refer to you guys if anybody like having any questions about uh, food intake, uh, what is good for you, um, pre-training, post-training to reduce inflammation, uh, help you recover, etc. All right, so train hard, keep it real, be always honest with yourself. Can you be a competitor? Does your schedule allows you? Uh, does your life uh, allows you to be a competitor? Even if you're a hobbyist competitor, you still need to put some work, right? Have a great week, everybody. Bye.